it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So today I'm going to show you how to make this. It's a cake topper, but I'm going to walk you through kind of um, how it started, where it ended, and just when you're thinking of cake toppers, how to build it. So this is it. It has a shaker in the middle, which I love. Um, and I used print and cut, so I kind of combined it quite a few things to it. So I just want to show you so you can kind of see what, what you have. Uh, let me move it over. There we go. Okay. So here's the deal. This cake topper, I feel like it's different than what I, um, uh, what I typically made, um, this year, which is lots of layers, lots of details, just like a lot going on. Um, and it might be too much going on for some people, but I love it. So I feel like this cake topper, now that that's kind of, I would say, my style um, for cake toppers, this felt really bare. And in fact, when I first made this cake topper, this is all I had. And let me move this over a little bit so you can see it better. I, in my mind, <laughs> so in this <laughs> crazy mind, and even looking at it on design space, it felt very complete to me because I knew this was going to be a shaker. It was going to have the glitter. I didn't want white glitter cardstock because I didn't want to struggle with gluing everything on top because if you work with glitter cardstock, you know that you can't really use double-sided tape. And I like using double-sided tape. I do use glue, which I use glue on this one, but I just... I felt like, you know, everything with the Grinch was already going to be glitter cardstock. So I felt that if I had a white glitter cardstock background, it would be too much and then it wouldn't stand out. Then all the glitter kind of cancels itself out um, and it doesn't stand out quite as much. And so that's why I went with this plain white. So when I finished this design, I cut it and I put it down. It looked so so bare to me. I was not used to this look. And it, and it is a complete cake topper and you may very well like it. Again, this is personal preference, but what I was used to was I needed more. So that's when I went back and added the tree. That's why the tree is over here because it was a last minute. I felt like it needed just a little bit more and I ended up doing the tree um, in glitter cardstock and it just felt like because there's the white layer in between, so there wasn't like too much glitter. And so that's what I ended with. But I still don't love it, love it. <laughs> but this is what it ended up looking like. Um, so I will show you how to design it. I think now if I were to go back and, oops, let me move this all one second. I think because my Christmas tree was a last minute ad, um, if I had started with the Christmas tree and everything, I would not have done this white background here. It would have had a full background all the way in the back that included the Christmas tree. So an off, a general offset of everything in the back, and I would do two layers. I like three layers. So I like my Christmas tree, and then an outline, and then one more outline. Um, that's what I would have liked to do if I redid this one. But it is up to you. I'm gonna show you how to do everything. So Design Space has this Christmas tree. So let's go and find that. That's the easiest thing to do. So you go into Images and you search for Christmas tree. And I've been told that when you're searching for things, don't add the plural. So don't add Christmas trees, that S at the end, just Christmas tree, and you should get more results. Although, you know what? Now that I'm on camera, let's see. So we got 97, almost 9,800 results, right? So let's do Christmas trees, oops. I wanted to just add the S, 9794. All right, so that was fake news right there. <laughs> so type in whatever the heck you want to type in. Okay, so Christmas trees. Um, let's see, which one did I end up going with? I think it was this one or this one. There, I, I, Those two are the same. So let's um, insert the image. So I do have access, so it's free. Um, I didn't want the cutouts because I knew it was going to be in the back. So what you would do is you would go to contour and hide all, and that will give you your solid tree. And that is the tree that I use. Perfect. 
So we'll move it over here. I'm gonna move everything over just a little bit. I'm so conscious now of where my face is. <laughs> so, okay, so let's make this big. All right, so what else did we do? So the word Mary, 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 Mary. Um, I got that onto font, so I downloaded the font. It is Grinch 2.0. Um, and I did it because I, you know, I was going with the Grinch theme, but honestly, I, I'm not a Grinch fan. So when I saw the words cut out like this, I don't know if I, if I would recognize if it didn't have all the Grinch clues that if I saw the font that I would say, oh, clearly Grinch. Um, I know, I'm just, once I'm down on something, it's just all downhill. Um, Cause you know, I like my fancy fun fonts, like the whimsical cursive letters. Uh, so anyway, once you download the fonts, um, you need to go into Inkscape to create the outline. And because I knew that I wanted to do Mary, I wasn't sure how I was going to do Mary. I did an outline and then I brought it in and rearranged everything. So let's go into Inkscape. And Inkscape is free. The only thing I do in Inkscape is an offset. So trust me when I say this, go get Inkscape because you need an offset. The offset will help you make everything look so, so much better. Um, it didn't open. Did I do something wrong? Um, oops, hold on. I did say open, right? Why is it not? Okay, I'm gonna let it see if it's gonna pop up in a second. Um, the Grinch hand, this is the ornament uh, holding one. So let's upload that. That was an image that I got on Etsy, okay? So here it is. So, darn it, I don't even know how to. Okay, I did both the hand and the Mary um, part. I actually did it in the Silhouette business software. I know so little in Silhouette software, but I love it because um, the offset is so easy. So I'm gonna bring these two in. I'm gonna wait for Inkscape to come up. I'm not gonna do, okay, it won't help you because I know most of my uh, subscribers are Cricut users. It won't help you to download the free version of the Silhouette software because if you don't have the paid version, you can't um, export anything. So kind of like Design Space where we design everything in Design Space, you can't then send it to your friend. But if you bought the business version of the Silhouette software, then you can um, save everything as an SVG file and then you can bring it into Design Space. So I've been doing that for some of these things because I like getting the offset much faster than I would um, using Inkscape. So originally I was gonna do Merry Grinchmas. I know, I'm just, this is uh, where, oh, there's my Inkscape. Okay, it's opening up. So let's go over here. Oh, <laughs> let's do our text. So you click on the text button. You want to um, go to Grinch. So I downloaded the font already. Here it is, Grinch, where are you? There it is, Grinch 2.0. You do your font box and type in Mary. Okay, and then click the arrow key. And you wanna make sure, I'm making it big so we can all see it right now. You wanna make sure it's locked. Mine always defaults to unlock. So you wanna lock it so that when you make it bigger, everything gets bigger proportionately. All right, so here's Mary. And then what you wanna do is, right now this is selected, right? So click in the white space so nothing is selected. Click on the paint bucket. And hold on, let me make this bigger. So we clicked on the paint bucket. Pick on any color that you want to. It doesn't matter because we'll change it in design space. Okay, so I picked on this gray. And you're gonna go into the grow or shrink by um, box. If you wanna shrink it, if you wanna do an internal offset so you want it to go inside, then you're gonna put the negative sign in front. Um, otherwise it defaults to like 20 would be a plus 20. So in this case, 20 is good. 
Then what you want to do is because each of these letters are not connected, we're going to have to create an offset for each one. So we're going to click the M. So it made it bigger, you see, and you can tell because it got, look how the gray is so much closer to the E, right? So here's the E, R, R, and Y. If you wanted to do another um, outline, you would just click on the arrow key and this is selected, right? Because it was the last thing that we worked on. Click in the white space because you don't want anything selected. Click on your paint bucket, pick on another color, and let's say you wanted to do an offset of 40. So let's type, oh, I did 400, 40. And then this time, when we click on the M, it'll give us an outline of the M and the E because it's already connected. Oh, everything's connected, perfect. So there's our big one. So let's click on the arrow key. You wanna grab everything, go to path, object to path, file, save as, and I'm gonna save it as Mary Offset Inkscape, just so that I can remember. Okay, so we've saved it. What you wanna do then is you wanna go into design space, and I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna delete the ones that I brought in, hold on. And you wanna do an outline for your hand as well, okay? So same thing in Inkscape, you upload the image and then you do your outline. Okay, so we're gonna to go to upload, upload image, browse, we gotta go find the file that we just saved and it was Mary, let's see. Um, here it is, Mary Offset Inkscape, and then save. You wanna click on it and insert the image. So here's our file. I feel like your design space is starting to slow down a little bit. Okay. Let's ungroup it. This is our most back layer, right? So I'm gonna move it down. And I want to get rid of that little circle, so just click on contour. And click on this to remove it. So now you have a full, okay. Now the Mary is broken up into different, um, each one is a different item. So you wanna grab it over here, hit the shift key and grab all your gray items and weld it. This will give you this layer and then your Mary you can then change into your different colors. So you can, um, you can either click it here and start changing the colors. So I want red um, and the R is red. I should have done it that way. And then this E and this Y was a light green. Mm, let's choose this green. And then this R is a dark green. And this is just for you visually to, and you know, kind of put together your, your image. Um, but of course, when you go to cut it, you can put whatever color cardstock, whatever shade of green. This is just to get you kind of like your creative juices flowing and kind of help you finalize your drawing. Um, okay, so that's Mary right there. This is already grouped together, so it will move like this and you wanna bring it to the front. So if I did it like the way I had it, um, this one, this layer would be white and I didn't have that back layer, but now that I do, um, I would probably, I don't know, maybe a dark green. How would that, oh no, oops, let me undo that. I'm not there yet. I need to click on the out, the last layer and let's change that to a green. I don't know how cute that would look or maybe even a blue. I don't know. So, all right. So here, so you can do your Mary. So I'm changing the way this looks because I, I didn't like the first one anyway. So 
and you can group it so that it always moves together um, and you can resize it together as well okay so let's go back over here so we have Mary and I have it three times but let's put our Grinch hand where we want it and how big we want it so you have to decide what you want to size first so if you size let's say your Christmas tree you want this cake topper to be nine inches right so let's you can either make it exactly nine inches then if this Christmas tree is the right size everything else needs to be sized accordingly so now this hand do we want it bigger or smaller you can do it that way and maybe Mary is gonna be oops Okay, here we go. Move it down, maybe like this. Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at this hand. This hand has the black. Now, if you notice, I while the hand is this size, I made the shaker way big. And it's okay because all we need from this picture is the string coming down and the ornament. So kind of like what you see here. And then I made this ornament as big as I wanted to. So I will show you how to do that. Let's get the Mary um, in a few more places. Let's duplicate it. I kind of like this blue in there. So this is gonna go right around here and then one more Mary. It's gonna go somewhere over here, let's say. And then now we're gonna make this bigger. All you need to do is bring in a circle and let's let's make this layer of the hand. Let's go. So I'm gonna let's see. Let's pull this circle over for a second. And I'm gonna flatten this image so that we don't have so many line items over here. It's gonna look funky because the white is gonna disappear. It's gonna look like a picture. So this is as if we did a print and cut, but this is just so that we have an image of what it's supposed to look like but it won't get in the way of our file. Okay, so you see how with circles, it's so awesome. We can put it there and that ornament would fit to that if that's the size that we wanna make it, okay? So let's say this is the size that you wanna make it. Let's go look at our Grinch hand for a second. So our Grinch hand has the black outline that's gonna give us this, which we want, and then it also has the offset. So the offset is here. We should weld it together so it's one piece. So here's our offset, and I would make the offset the same as this blue. So it's kind of like one, it matches everything. And then let's send this arrange send to the back, but I'm gonna send this tree all the way to the back so that we can see what we have. So that's what it looks like right now. Um, so if we like this, this will be our backmost layer. Um, then you want to create, so this is our backmost layer. We need another layer. Oops, let me delete that, sorry. I thought I was on my circle. We're gonna create the foam. So this is our backmost layer, right? So duplicate. So our foam is gonna sit on top. It's gonna to be the same size, but we need to slice it out so it's just it's just the like a tire, right? Because we're gonna pour the, the sequins inside. So um, you're gonna duplicate that because we're now gonna make a smaller version so that we can slice it out so that you have your foam circle like your foam wall so what you want to do is once you have that let's say you like that size here's the big here's a new circle here's the big circle right behind it so you want to hit shift to grab both of these items you want to go to align and you want to center it so that it's perfectly centered to slice it because once you slice it let's let me show you what you have you now have this, which is your foam circle. So let's change the color of that to, let's say a light gray. Okay, so this is our foam circle. You're gonna put this on top of this back layer of the ornament. 
And you're gonna sprinkle in your sequins, right? Uh, sequins, glitter, whatever. And then you need a layer of acetate to go on top. It has to be the same size as this, right? So our back layer, make a duplicate copy. This is now our acetate layer, right? Our acetate paper. So we need to make that also a different color so that it, you won't get confused when you go to cut this. Although you may be confused right now because I'm just talking away. Okay, so let's pull this all out. Okay, so this is our backmost layer of the ornament. Our foam is gonna go on top. You're gonna sprinkle in your sequins and whatever inside. Then you're gonna tape on your acetate layer on top. That's gonna seal in your sequins, right? And then you need is this nice little colored border on top to hide your um, the acetate paper and your foam layer. So that's gonna be a duplicate of this and it's gonna be whatever color that you want it to be. So in my case, it is gonna be the green. So this is gonna be the top layer that sits on top. We still need to go get the Grinch to put in here. So I uploaded that image of the Grinch. So let's type in Grinch. So I bought this file on Etsy. So here's my cute little Grinch. I'm gonna insert it. So the Grinch here is actually an SVG file. So if you wanted to make any changes to him, you can as far as color. So let's say you wanted him to wear um, instead of a white fur thing, you can change that by clicking on it and changing the color. So let's say you wanted to make it blue for some reason. Okay, so then what you do is you go and grab the Grinch and then you flatten it. So now this little guy is a print and cut. So you're gonna send it to your printer, it's gonna print, then you send it to your Cricut so that it cuts perfectly all the way around and he's going inside your little shaker. And then there's gonna be glitter all around him. So that's what he's gonna look like. And I think we are, oh no, we're not done because you want everything to kind of fit, right? So hold on, so let's, decompose this guy over here a little bit. Now the sizing is all correct, okay? So you have your, what happened to my Grinch? He's over here somewhere, because I still see him on my panel over here. Let's move all of this out. So one layer is cardstock, one layer is the foam. This is our back, right? But I also want an outline of this. So I'm going to duplicate this this backing and I'm going to make it white because we want it in white cardstock so that the Grinch stands out and then you can see your glitter. So this one is going to be part of this blue layer. So I'm going to go and find my blue layer with the hand, this one. I'm going to shift and grab this and I'm actually going to attach it to all of my blue layers. So my blue layer is going to be one gigantic background. So as I hit the shift key, I'm gonna grab this Mary. I'm gonna grab this Mary. And is there any other blue? Oh, there, I'm missing this blue. I hit the shift key and grab this Mary. And I'm gonna weld it. Okay, so now I have a background that it all goes on. So I'm gonna send this one to the back. Arrange, send to the back. And I'm gonna send my tree to the back so that you could see it. So you have the blue outline. You have, this is the backmost layer. So you can't really see, yeah, okay. 
And then you have the foam layer. Oh, that's not the foam layer. This is the foam layer. And then you have the Grinch. Where are you, Grinch? Oh, there you are. I'm gonna go in the front. You have your acetate layer. And then you have your cardstock layer that sits on top. And then you have your words. So that's your cake topper. It's going to give you a little bit better of a version than this because it has that additional layer. All right, I hope that helps you build cake toppers, but you can kind of see like what I was thinking as I was building it, and it just didn't quite come out. And I, I've been kind of giving that same message as I put things together, because the first time that you design something and you cut it, you may have worked with those colors before and you feel very confident but when you go to cut it and piece it together, that's when you realize like, oh, that color right next to this color actually doesn't work. Um, this needs to be a little bit bigger. I feel like what you envision and what you design still doesn't come to life, obviously, until you see it all together. And that's when you make changes on the fly, like adding the Christmas tree um, and other layers as well. But um, this will get you the start. I mean, I feel like this is a a middle of the road cake topper. Your most plain cake topper is one layer and it might say like happy birthday or happy 40th birthday and it's all nice one layer. Your next version would be two layers. You have the outline and those words. This is sort of like the third layer where you've got multiple things going on. It's kind of some, some things are sticking out, some things aren't. And then you have your final layer of like shaker, mover. Uh, what else do I have on my other ones? Um, and just tons and tons of layers and details. And it's just like a whole festival going on on your cake topper. So you find what whatever you like and you stick to that and you design it that way. It's just adding more and more things. So I realize that, I don't know, you, some of you guys might think it's so tacky what I like for a cake topper, but I like it to be super, super busy with a ton of layers. So that's why on this one, I'm having a hard time showing you guys how to do it because it wasn't that fun for me. <laughs> so, okay, post your comments. Let me know what you think. And then if you have any special requests, let me know as well. Um, I do read all my comments on all my accounts. And then if you have extra details or files or specifics, whatever, you can always email it to me. It's Anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right, see you guys. Thank you.